Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined once again by Jim Sanas of FanDuel. We switch over from the Lynx over to Talladega. That's the course this week in NASCAR. Jim, you ready? Always ready for Talladega, Greg. It should be a fun race, and it's a pretty interesting one for DFS because the field is being set effectively by owner points, and that means the best cars are starting up front. But in Talladega, you want to target drivers starting further back. So you're probably going to leave a lot of salary on the table here this week on FanDuel, but it's going to make for some very interesting lineups. So I'm excited to get building and seeing how this shakes out. How are you, Greg? I'm doing well, Jim. I'm excited, obviously, uh, for this race this weekend. So let's start breaking down uh, our lineup shares here in DFS. And the highest price driver this week that you're going with, it's Eric Amarola, $11,000 on FanDuel this week. Why is he your man as your high price play? Yeah, Almarola isn't even that high salaried. He's $11,000, whereas the most expensive driver is $13,300. So not even that expensive, but he is a driver who is starting between 13th and 24th. They will draw for starting positions on Thursday nights. We'll know where he is in that range then. But I think Almarola is good enough at this track where we can get behind him no matter who, where he winds up within that range. Looking at my model right now for Talladega, Almarola actually ranks eighth overall in my model for this race. And it's for good reason because he actually won here back in the fall of 2018. And Stuart Haas Racing, the team he drives for, dominated that entire race. Almarola got the win. Clint Boyer finished second. And we also saw Almarola get a win on a pack racing track back in the day when he was with Petty Motorsports at Daytona. So he's really good at this type of track where there's a lot of jockeying for position. Almarola, seven straight top 10 finishes in Talladega. That's borderline impossible given how high variance of a track it is. He has four top fives and a win in that time. So he could start as high as 13th, but given the fact that I think he has a good shot to win this race. He's 26 to one to win at FanDuel Sportsbook. I like that number as well. We're going to throw that out there because why not? But I think that Almarola will be starting lower in the order than most of the drivers who can realistically win this race. So I am willing to use him regardless of where he starts. He will probably be a cash game play if he starts 24th. So see where Almarola winds up in the draw. And I think that he is in play for tournaments regardless and very in play for cash games and probably be the first guy to lock into cash games if he draws at the bottom end of that range. All right, get him in there in those cash game lineups. All those top 10 finishes at Talladega, like you said, relatively unheard of. Obviously, previous success at Daytona that you mentioned as well. High variance. Good number at the FanDuel Sportsbook here. A lot to like about Eric Almarola here. $11,000. Not even that expensive here on FanDuel this week. Up next, also in that high salary range, is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's over $10,000 this week over at Fandle. What's his starting position expected to be in the range here, Jim? Yeah, he'll be in the same range as Eric Alvarola, between 13th and 24th. And in the spirit of Talladega Knights, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has a little bit of Ricky Bobby in him, where if he ain't first, he's probably last. His checkers are records for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. That's true at every track because... He wrecks a lot. There's a reason his nickname is Recky Stenhouse. But it's especially true in Talladega, and his ceiling is higher at this track than it is at any other track. He did get a win here back in 2017, and he also won the July Daytona race that year. So basically, he's either top 10 or he wrecks. There is no in-between. He has been in the top five in four of the past seven races in Talladega. He wrecked in two of the others and finished ninth in the fall last year. So I'm not even exaggerating. This is very literal. He either finishes top 10 or he wrecks. That's the way it goes. He will start uh, outside the top 12, just like Eric Almarola. Good win odds, a respectable starting spot. So Ricky Stenhouse Jr. If checks a lot of boxes. The one box he does not check is that he drives a Chevy. And I am overall kind of worried about Chevys this week because their bumpers didn't link up well in Daytona and – that led to some weirdness at the end. I don't believe there were any Chevys in the top seven finishing positions. So generally, I'm not super into the Chevrolets this week. But because Stenhouse is so cheap uh, at $10,100, has the ability to win, and will start between 13th and 24th, I'm going to take the risk on him as a driver and Chevy as a manufacturer to get him into my lineups this weekend. You want to talk about high risk, high reward. That is it for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. As Jim mentioned, he either crashes or finishes in the top 10. So either you'll, it's very simple, right? You'll either cash on Fandle this week or you won't. He's pretty, that's it. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has the ability to crush it for you or get crushed. That's the risk that you're going to take. The $10,100, it's well worth it. Even though he was driving a Chevy, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. belongs in your lineup at 
as does Christopher Bell. He's priced at $9,100 here on FanDuel this week. Why is Bell worth getting into our lineups here, Jim? Well, stop me if you heard this one before, Greg, but it's because of where he will start this race. Christopher <laughs> Bell is actually in the start even deeper than Almarola and Stenhouse because he is outside the top 24, or his team is outside the top 24 in owner points, which means he could start this race as deep as 36. And if he does that, Christopher Bell is going to be in a really good spot. But he's also a good talent. He is a good driver coming up from the Xfinity Series, and the equipment has been good enough recently for us to have a good deal of confidence in him. We saw Christopher Bell have a good run in Daytona this February, his first race uh, with Levine Family Racing, and he actually restarted that race in second position with less than 10 laps left. You'll be shocked to learn that he crashed because that happens a lot at these tracks. But a good run there showed some upside in that race, and he had a decent track record at the pack racing tracks in the Xfinity Series. He didn't win, but he was third in Talladega last year in the Xfinity Series, led 16 laps in that race. So I'm not 100% convinced that Christopher Bell will wind up being an elite pack racing driver as his Cup Series career advances, but the starting position is there. The equipment is good enough for him to compete, and I think that the talent is there enough as well. $9,100, a good salary for Christopher Bell, given that he will be starting all the way in the back. You're probably going to leave a lot of salary on the table, and that should make it really easy to afford Christopher Bell, even if he may not be in like top-tier equipment, still very much worth his salary on Sunday. And that's the important thing with Christopher Bell, right? Worth his salary. He has a good starting position, may not be a top-tier driver when it's all said and done uh, and his career continues on. But this week at $9,100, it's a really nice price for Bell. It's worth putting in your lineups. Another guy that you consistently like since NASCAR has been back has been Matt Benedetto. He's priced at $8,100, and he's relatively been in this range. He's been someone that you've relied on. I know we talked about it yesterday in golf, but until someone fails you, we're going to put him back in the lineup course yesterday that was Rory McIlroy until it doesn't work we you leave him in there well Matt Benedetto is a bit cheaper than Rory McIlroy McIlroy comparatively here in NASCAR why does Benedetto belong in our lineups once again He's like a discount version of Eric Almarola, where he checks a lot of the same boxes because he drives for a good team. Uh, he's starting between 13th and 24th. He's not that expensive. And I think he has a shot to win this race. He is 40 to 1 to win at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that's kind of interesting is the way that I would phrase that at 40 to 1. So Di Benedetto could win this race. And like I was saying, he has what we kind of want out of drivers in this range. He drives for Wood Brothers Racing. And that means he is effectively teammates. It's, they basically say that Wood Brothers Racing is a Penske team with a different Twitter account. So he's effectively teammates with Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, and Ryan Blaney. And again, teammates matter a lot here. And all three of those teammates are 11 to 1 to win or better. Di Benedetto is 40 to 1. So, and he's starting between 13th and 24th. If he gets to the front, he will have help once he gets there. Now, when you look at the track history for Di Benedetto at Talladega, it's not that great. He's never finished better than 18th at this track, but he's crashed sometimes. And he's also been in doggy do equipment for his entire career and is now in finally in a competent car. And I think that that bodes well for him. Having teammates should help as well. He had a top 16 average running position in both Talladega races last year. He almost won in Daytona last year. So another good blend of talent and teammates like we discussed with Eric Almarola earlier on. He's only $8,100. He's starting outside the top 12. There are a lot of good drivers in this range. So if Almarola, Stenhouse, Tyler Reddick, Austin Dillon, William Byron, Eric Jones, Chris Busher, if any of those guys start in the bottom end of this range, I will go their way. But just playing things straight up, I think that DiBenedetto and Almarola are my two favorites. They're in forwards. They've got good teammates, and they've got a shot to win this race for not, a, not a, an overly restrictive salary. I think that's really cool that his teammates, right, all at 11 to 1, Penske Racing, and he's at 40 to 1 here, Matt Benedetto, for a lot of the reasons that you're going to like his teammates. If you look at the starting position here, right in that middle, where you want to be, he's had some track success, and it would have been better if he didn't get into those wrecks. But Matt Benedetto, he's really nicely priced, both the FanDuel Sportsbook and here on FanDuel uh, in DFS at $8,100. Benedetto, D. Benedetto, a really good start here this week. Let's go to some more of our value plays, and that includes Cole Custer at $7,800. Uh, Custer, um, he's had some success as well. We took a look at track history. Cole Custer, is it good enough that it's worth putting in your lineups here? 
Yeah, so if Di Benedetto is a discount version of Eric Almirola, Cole Custer is a discount version of Christopher Bell because they're both rookies. And Bell has outperformed Custer by a pretty significant margin so far this year. But Custer will be starting outside the top 24 as well. He'll be starting between 25th and 36th. And that's a good thing. The reason that I say he's a discount version of Bell is because there are several additional concerns with Custer, namely that he didn't finish very well here in the Xfinity Series. He ran six races at the pack racing tracks. He crashed three times. He had only one top 10 finish. That one top 10 was in Talladega, but a little bit concerning. That's the bad. The good is that he is going to start deeper in the pack. We always like that at Talladega. That's encouraging. The equipment is awesome. He is teammates with Kevin Harvick, Eric Almirola, Clint Boyer with Stuart Haas Racing, so we know that he has the speed to get the job done and the upside to win this race. That's all a good thing for Cole Custer. So Custer, in a similar mold to Christopher Bell, he is riskier because I am more skeptical of the talent with Custer at this track type than I am with Christopher Bell, but he checks every other box we could possibly have. So Cole Custer, $7,800. If I could avoid him in cash games, I would like to do so. And it really does depend on where he draws. Like if he draws 25th, I am okay passing him over. But if he draws 36th, it's going to be hard not to go there. So see where he draws. But I think overall, Cole Custer, despite the legitimate concerns around his profile, still a good play for Sunday in Talladega. We'll see where he does wind up starting here, uh, where he draws. We'll see. As Cole Custer, like I said, of course, history exists. Not, not all of it's great, but it does exist. He has history, of course, uh, at Talladega and tracks like this. He's got good teammates, like you mentioned. And, and if Custer could just do enough for you as a rookie, comparatively, Christopher Bell, almost $2,000 cheaper than Christopher Bell, it's worth putting in your lineups. Cash games, we'll see. But let's just wait. And it may be, you may have no choice, depending on where he's starting. We'll have that draw coming up in a little bit. One last driver to get into our lineups, according to you, Jim Sonis, and that's Ryan Priest. He is $7,000, super, super cheap on FanDuel. Why is he worth getting in there? Yeah, I just wanted to mention a couple of other drivers who are starting outside the top 24 who could be interesting. We mentioned Bell and Custer. They're the primary guys I'm targeting back here. Ryan Priest is one. Also, Michael McDowell, Brendan Gaughan, Corey LaJoy, and Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon, $7,400. I think all those guys are intriguing. The reason that I listed Price or Priest here above those others is that He's the one guy with a pretty decent track record on this track type going back to last year. He was eighth in last year's Daytona 500, a very different track, but again, similar style. And he then followed that up with a third place finish in Talladega last year. So he showed that he can get a top end finish on this track type and he will be running or starting outside the top 24 for this weekend. Going back to February when he was in Daytona, he was running well, really well in that race before a late crash took him out. Uh, So I think that, Priest is my favorite driver among the non-Bell or Custer drivers who will start outside the top 24. But again, I'm willing to use any of Bell, Custer, Priest, Ty Dillon. I think that they're all really good plays. And salary is not going to be an uh, an issue here. But I think that Priest, given his ability, I think that same thing is is true with Christopher Bell. I am willing to leave salary on the table to use them versus spending up for a driver who may be starting higher in the pack. So Just get comfortable, get your your mind set to the point where you need to be okay leaving salary on the table because it will be necessary to fill out a good lineup this weekend. Priest is a big part of that at $7,000. You don't need the savings, but I will still take them because his profile is so good. A lot of different directions that you could go with here in the value in the value tier. You don't necessarily need the savings, as you mentioned, Jim, because our highest priced driver that we have in the lineup here, it's Eric Almarola. Only eleven thousand dollars. We're not up to the Kevin Harvick level uh, here. Ryan Priest, seven thousand uh, dollars. What he gives you, it's too good to pass up. So let's take that extra savings, be able to manipulate the lineup here a little bit, and let's get Priest in there this weekend. That's gonna do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up! We're set for the PGA Tour. We are set for NASCAR. I'm ready to go, Jim. I'm ready for this weekend. Yeah, we got the Belmont Stakes coming up, too. Uh, we've got the English Premier League back. It's a good time to be a sports fan. Finally, once again, we have some live sports to watch. So going to be a good weekend. And looking forward to talking to you once again next week, Greg. It has been way too long since we've said it's a good weekend to be a sports fan. Hopefully, that'll be the case all summer long. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Have a wonderful weekend. Good luck and stay safe, everybody.